to be a Is a 
day of Thanksgiving. We don't have to wait for the holiday to give God Thanksgiving. We don't have to wait for Thanksgiving to give God praise because every day God deserves our praise. So come on and give God just a, just a little more praise in this place today. Give God a little Thanksgiving in this place today. Because nobody didn't wake up today. But you are here. Revelation, 
that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, that the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord, Christ, which means three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. Where when I am weak, then I am strong. The Lord, Lord's word is blessed.
is a touch from the Lord. When I'm going through things, when I'm grieving, when I'm in pain, when I'm suffering, when my heart is broken, when I can't sleep at night, when the cares of this world seem to have taken a toll on me, all I need is a touch from the Lord. Yes, mama can touch me. Yes, daddy can touch me. Yes, my family can touch me. But can't nobody touch me the way Jesus can touch me. Brother Sterling said, take the wrongs in my life and make them right. Can't nobody do that for us but Jesus. All we need, God, is a touch for you. But we don't know where we're going. All we need is a touch, Lord. When we can't see things clearly, all we need, Lord, is a touch from you. Lord God, when our mind seems to be a little foggy, all we need, God, is a touch from you. And we know that one touch, that one touch, Lord, is going to make everything all right. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. We want to thank Deaconess Zelda Johnson for the scripture reading. We want to thank Deacon Papa for the prayer. And again, we want to thank this choir for all that they do. And I want to thank the musicians. And now we're going to have our welcome by Sister Carolyn Ross. Saturday, December the 9th, from 11 till 1. 
Uh, you should have already signed up for that event you intend to um, to come. So be sure to keep that on your calendar. I want to ask that all officers please be sure to check your mailboxes in the back. In the back. And the need the members of the primary class and uh, with the attention of the parents of the primary class to be sure to pick up the recitations for the Christmas program, which is going to be a short program. Um, and also we need to have any children who are interested in participating in a short skit to see Ms. Deaconess Zelda Johnson. Those are the only announcements I have for today, so thank you and have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joan. I only have a couple of announcements um, in pastor's absence, and that's that we will just continue to um, look at the screen before church and after church for important announcements. And then also, um, just want to remind you all that we do have the prayer boxes right here, and we do have people that are praying, so if you have a prayer request, just feel free to drop it in the box. Amen? Amen. All right. Now we ask that our ushers will prepare themselves for our offering. Amen? Amen.
the offering will be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. We pray for a word from the speaker today that will touch our hearts and change our lives. We thank you for all that you do and all that you are to us. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
So will you all pray for the preacher Amen. that has the word of God on high for us today? Amen. We ask that you pray for the preacher and after this choir gives us our sermonic selection, the very next voice she will hear will be that of Reverend Hogan. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
privilege to be here on this morning. Uh, to Reverend Harris and First Lady Shirley in their houses. Yeah. I thank God for them. Amen. Amen. To my wonderful wife, my ride or die for the last <laughs> 35 years. It's just a great day. Yes, it is. There's so many things that we can complain about, but it's just a great day. And so I won't be before you too long. I asked them to bed. Like I said, so what time do you guys get out of here so I, I can respect your time? But I think what I got to say, the Holy Spirit can get it all done and we'll be out for a long time. God is just so good. Every now and then, it's good just to sit down and reflect yes, 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 yes. on how good God is. Because so yes. sometimes we forget the little things that He's yes. doing in our life that yes. we expect it to happen, but God really don't have to do what He do for us. Yes. And, and Mr. Daddy said earlier, in spite of me, in spite of my nasty attitude, in spite of my bad ways, He still keeps on blessing me. And the fact we all are thinking on this one. I want to uh, pray and then we're going to get into the reading of this word and then get into what he has given to me. Gracious Father, we just thank you now. Father, it's now that you steal us in this moment. Steal our hearts, steal our minds. That we may rest, God, so that your Holy Spirit can speak. God, I ask now that you hide me behind Calvary's cross. Father God, I pray right now you use me as the instrument just to proclaim your gospel. Touch Lord. Now, God, we have your locals that we read. Now give us a rainbow, God, that will speak to our situation and our circumstances. So, God, we're thanking you in advance because we know you said your word would not return to your board, but it will accomplish all that you purpose and destiny. So, Holy Spirit, have your way. Touch God right now. Meet us where we are, God. Give us what we need, God, to continue yes. on this journey. Yes. And for that, we tell you thank you. Thank you. And God, when it's all said and done, we want to give you the glory. Yes. We want to give you the honor. Yes. And we want to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, we Jesus. pray. Amen. 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 The scripture was read earlier, but I want to read it again, coming from the New Living Translation. Okay. St. Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10 again. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. And it reads as, from the New Living Translation, this boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was called up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I do know that I was called up to paradise. And heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to vote to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it. Because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear my message. Oh. Even though I have received such wonderful revelation from God. Yeah. So to keep me from becoming proud, right I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment, to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Yeah. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Yeah. Each time he said, my grace yeah. is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And just for a few minutes, if you don't mind, I just want to share from the theme, leaning on God's grace. Yes. Leaning on God's grace. Yes. In 1971, 
Bill Withers, the famous songwriter, came up with a song titled Lean On Me. Yeah. 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 This song was based upon his experience growing up in a, in, in a part of West Virginia known as Slap Fork. Bill Withers stated that growing up there was a lot different than what he was witness, what he witnessed later in his life living elsewhere. He said Slap Fork was a place where people were a little more attentive to each other. The song reflected how the people are practiced helping others when there was a need. And so the song goes like this. It says, sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong. And I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need Somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride. Yeah. Yes. If I have things you need to follow, for no one can feel those of your knees that you won't let show. You just call on me, bro, when you need a knee. Well, I need somebody to lean on. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. And I'll be your friend. I have you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. And as we mature through this course of life, we all have come into points and times where we needed somebody to lean on. And, and, and you, the person that you lean on is somebody that's trustworthy. Yes. Somebody that's accountable. Yes. Somebody that's dependable. Because we all need somebody to lean on. Yes. In the sermonic text on this morning, we find Paul having to deal with what we call these people, this group called super apostles. Mm-hmm. And this group of super apostles was going around boasting about all that they were doing. Mm-hmm. They were boasting and giving accolades about all the great things that was happening and that they were making happen in the lives of people. And Paul coming along, and and they're trying to denounce Paul. They're trying to minimize what Paul was doing. They're trying to devalue what Paul was doing for the church. And Paul was saying, at the beginning, he said, this boasting would do us no good. Hmm. But but if you want me to boast, Uh I I can boast because I've been through some things and I've seen some things Mm -hmm. that no human had ever seen, and I can boast about that. Mm -hmm. But he said, the boasting won't do me no good. Right. The, the boasting don't edify nobody. Right. Yeah. He, so, so he, he said, I'd rather boast in my weaknesses. Right. I'd rather talk about my weaknesses. Uh-huh. Because it's in my weaknesses that Christ is strong. Yes. Yes. Right. So he talked about, he said, I was taken up into the third heaven, uh-huh. into the presence of God. He said, I saw some things, I heard some things that were beyond my power and permission to tell. So to keep Paul from being proud, to keep Paul from exalting himself above others, it says a thorn was given to him in his flesh yeah. for the message of Satan. Uh, yeah. and, and every now and then, my brothers and sisters, there will be something that the Lord will allow us to go through that just keeps us humble. Yeah. You, you know, we, we, we sometimes, you know how we can do We get a certain degree. Uh-huh. We, we get a certain high profile job. We, we get a certain amount in our bank account and we think we're all that in a bag of chips. But every now and then, God got to just drop something. Yeah. He got to allow something to happen yes. just to keep you humble. Yeah. Just to make you realize that you ain't what you thought you were. Yeah. Just to make you realize that you need to keep yourself even killed like everybody else does. Yeah. You know better than the next man or woman. That's right. And so he, he, he allowed Paul to go through with the stone in his flesh. And Paul went to Jesus, the Lord, three times. And he asked him to take it away. Each time he asked the Lord to take it away, the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. The Lord promised to give Paul the grace to bear it. The thorn he used is to keep Paul humble and dependent on Christ. God will always allow us to go through something that keeps us dependent on him. He'll never let you get out there when you think you can do it on your own. You got to have something. 
something that reels you back in. Yes. He got to have something to touch you and remind you, hey, you can't go without me. Right. You, you can't get this journey uh, through this journey without me. Yes. Paul understood that when he is speaking, he must rely completely on the strength of the Christ. Mm -hmm. That is the only strength that matters. Yeah. And my brothers and sisters, as we go through this life, as we deal with all that we're facing in 2023, and we don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow, yeah. we need Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need to depend on Christ. Yeah. Paul found himself having to lean on the grace of God to continue his Christian journey. The Bacon's Evangelical Dictionary of Biblical Theology defines grace as the unmerited favor of God towards man. Another definition of grace is the love of God shown to the unlovely. Yeah. The peace of God given to the restless. The unmerited favor of God. Just like Paul, my brother and sister, I submit to you today that we find ourselves having to lean on God's grace to survive. Yeah. 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 It was by grace that we are all in right standing with the Father right now because Ephesians 2 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believe. Yeah. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. So Paul realizes, he's telling us that when we go through some trying times, when we go through times of life, we got to lean on God's grace. Because yes, yes. every time we ask God, he don't always answer oh, that's with right. a yes. That's right. He, he don't always answer right when we call him. So every now and then in between the time of prayer and the time of answer, we got to be able to lean on his grace. Yes, yes, so there are three things I learned as I read the script, read the sermon text that will help us to be able to lean on the grace of God. The, the first point that I want to make to enable us to lean on the grace of God is we can lean on God's grace because it is backed by God's faithfulness. Okay. Right. 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 Yes. I, I can lean on somebody who, I, who, who's been faithful. Yeah. I, I can lean on somebody who's been through. Every time I call them, they get an answer. Yes. And God said, lean on me with my grace because I'm faithful. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Second Thessalonians 3 C said, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Amen. Hebrews 10 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Mm -hmm. And so, my brother and sister, the first thing we must understand is God is faithful. Yes, he is. So, so I can lean on his grace because he's never lost a case. Right. I can lean on him because he is limitless, yes. he, he doesn't run out. God's faithfulness is that guarantee that whatever he says, he will do. That's right. If God said it, you can put it to the bank. Right. He will do it. He might not do it when we want it, but God will do it. I, I think so the, God's people say he's an on time God. Yes, he is. There are no limitations on God. So even he even specializes in things that seem impossible. All right. <laughs> You know, every now and then we get ourselves in situations where we're wondering how we're going to make it because we're looking at the situation. Mm -hmm. but, but I tell you, every now and then you need to change your, 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 your thermostat. You need to change your pointer yes. and point your way towards Jesus. Yes. Because he's limited. Yes. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. Yes. He's all sufficient. So there's nothing that God can't help. Yes. We, we get caught up. We get caught up in the running muck of a society and today that we think this issue that we're dealing with is so heavy. We think that it's, it's a model. And, and I'm here to tell you, you're right. Lord. All right. When you're looking at it from your viewpoint, it can't be it's a model. <laughs> but every now and then, you got to look to the hills from which yeah. come with your help. Because your help comes from the Lord. So you understand that when I can't handle it, yeah. That's right. when, when, when I can't deal with it, yeah. when I can't figure it out, then I got to go to one who looks like and the all right, all right. I, I got to go to the one who knows my end from the beginning. Right. I got to go to the one who knows my tomorrow and ask him how can I make it through this. All yes. right. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and he shall not do it. Mm -hmm. Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good. Mm -hmm. If God said I don't care what mama said. I don't care what daddy said. But if God said, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, oh you, you question what I'm saying, go look outside and see if the stars are still hanging in the sky at night. Go, go, go look outside and see if the sun is still in its place at night. Go to the ocean and see if the waters are where they were. God said it. I can lean on God's grace because he's faithful. Yeah. That's the worst thing. 
He's faithful. Yes, he is. My mama might get tired. My brothers might be, my homeboys might get tired. There might be some moments and some things I go through that they can't deal with. But my God is faithful. And so, so every now and then it's good to know that you can sift through the crowd and get to Jesus. And if, if you don't believe it, go ask the woman with the issue of blood. She, she knew God was a faithful healer. And she knew I got to get to Jesus. By any means necessary. And the Bible says she crawled on the ground to Jesus. And she touched the hem of his garment. And right when she touched the hem of his garment, it said immediately her issue of blood stopped. That's right, immediately. God is faithful. He ain't just needs some people that's willing to come out for him. He just needs some people that has a heart for him to say, no matter what happens. And no matter what circumstances I go through in life, no matter how difficult the roles get, I got to get to Jesus. But while I'm not trying to get to Jesus, I'm going to lean on God's grace. Because he's faithful. When I look back over my life, I see what I've been going through, I realize that there are some situations I should be gone. There, there are some situations I should have lost my mind. Yeah. Yeah. The people I thought were on my side to help me walk down with me. The people I thought I could count on became people I couldn't count on. Mm -hmm. And so when all the dust settled, I realized that all I had was Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I realized that he's so faithful that he said, I'm going to wait till you get through doing all that. Yes. I'm, I'm going to let you try all these other things, but eventually you got to come back to me. <laughs> because I'm the starting point and I'm the end point yeah. in your life. Yes. Yes. If God tells you a thing, then you can be certain that it would happen. The God we serve is eternally reliable, steadfast, and unwavering because faithfulness is one of his, his inherent attributes. In his faithfulness, God protects us from evil. He sets limits on our temptations. He forgives us of our sins and he sanctifies us. God spake unto his word. There was a story in, Mark, in the book of Mark, chapter 4, 35 through 41, where he told the disciples, let us go to the other side. Mm -hmm. And as they took that journey across the war, Jesus went down to the bottom of the took him a nap. <laughs> While Jesus was sleeping and the disciples on the boat, a storm arose. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the storm was shaking and throwing the boat around it, and they was worried about dying and Jesus down there in the midst of a storm, in the midst, in the midst of a tossing ship, he's taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you might want to ask the question, well, how did Jesus sleep through all that's going on? Yeah. The word Jesus told him before they started was, let us go to the other side. Right. What happens between the time you leave the dock and the time you get to the other side, it don't even matter. All right, all right. And so every now and again, God will tell you to go do something, and you got to stop worrying about how it's going to play out in the door. You just got to start walking. Yeah, yeah. You just got to start obeying. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that God is faithful. Yeah. And if he told you, he'll do it. <laughs> if he told you yes. to help this person, yes. he will provide a way out. Amen. Amen. You don't believe me? Go talk to Paul back in. Tell him, and when he got on the Damascus road, he, he lost his vision. Yes. And Paul, God told him, Ananias, I'm sending Ananias to touch you. Yeah. But Ananias had a quick debate with God. He said, Well, God, he's been torturing yeah. the children of God. Uh -huh. yeah. He's been torturing your people. He's, he's out to kill us and take us back to Jerusalem. But, but, but God said, Go. You go, Ananias. I, I, I need you to do something for me. I, I got a great work for Paul. And so Ananias went and did what God said, and Paul received his sight. Yeah. Well, he was Saul then, but God transferred trans his name to Paul. Yeah. And, and so what I'm trying to tell somebody on this morning is, is you got to be there at a night. All right. When God tells you to go talk to that difficult person, oh, when, when God tells you to go help that person, you know just got to be talking about oh, it. Oh, oh, what God is truly saying is that I need you to be there at a night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need you not to worry about this. But worry about what I told you to do. Right, yeah. But understand that if I told you to do it, I'm going to 
going to provide a way for you. All right. If I told you to do it, I'm going to make sure you get to where you got to go. Yeah. I'm going to protect you from the danger of seeing is unseen. Mm -hmm. God's faithful this speech to him always being faithful and unchanging and true to his word. God is willing to forgive us and bless us even though we fall short of living a lifestyle mm -hmm. according to his word. Mm -hmm. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standards. Yes. Do I have anyone on the sound of my voice who can testify that God has been faithful in your life? Amen. 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 You, you don't mind letting the devil know that if it had not been for the Lord Amen. on my side. Amen. If God has been faithful to you, then you can surely lean on his grace. The, the second point, the second point that I want to share was that we can lean on God's grace because it's back, it's back by God's power. Amen. The God we serve is omnipotent, which means he not only has ultimate power over all things, but he is also the source of power. Yes, he is. Zephaniah 3.17 reminds us that the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is might. Yes. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, he will rest in his love, he will draw over thee with sin. The Greek word for power in the Bible is doing us. Mm -hmm. Doing us means power, might, and strength. Yes. Doing us reminds you of dynamite. Yes. And so, when the Lord comes on the scene, uh -huh. yes. you, you oh, must God. understand, it don't matter I know that's right. who walking around Billy back. Uh -huh. It don't matter how threatening the words are that come out of their mouth. Because when God shows up on the scene, oh, yeah. he, he shows up a do yeah, yeah, yeah. But But I want to tell you on this morning, if I can, that you walk with do All right, all right. All right. The Bible says, great is he that is in me, that he is in the world. So, so every now and then, you got to let that devil know that you talk me bad, but you don't know what I'm about. I, I might be small in stature, but I walk with a big stick. I, I got doodles. I got power. I got the Holy Ghost. That there are screws on the inside of me. And when the Holy Ghost rises up, when the Holy Ghost show up on the scene, yeah. the Holy Ghost has a way of changing the atmosphere. Yeah. The Holy Ghost has a way of changing attitude. Yeah. The Holy Ghost has a way of empowering me to be who God called me. Yeah. Because I walk in God's power, not in my power. Yeah. I walk in God's strength, not my strength. Yeah. And so when I walk in you talk, you better be careful how you treat me. Yeah. I know that's right. You better be using choice choice words on what you say. Yeah. Because I walk around and I got doodless power on the inside of me. Yeah. And every night and then, God will allow that doodless power to rise up in me. Yeah. Yeah. And God will allow me to speak a word of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what God is trying to tell us on the day. You got doodless power. Yeah. Speak to that situation. Yeah. Speak to that situation. Yeah. Speak to that circumstance. Yeah. Speak to that devil. Oh. And let that devil know that I walk with you. Yeah. I don't walk by myself. Yeah. You see me by myself, but I'm not by myself. Yeah. I got a God on the inside of me. Yeah. I got a Father who sits high in the yeah. sky. Yeah. I walk around with you. Yeah. Because God is all powerful. Yeah. And because of us, I'm his child. I'm all powerful. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we got to stop letting the devil try to talk us. We, we got to stop letting the devil think he can talk to us any kind of way. I belong to God. I'm a child of God. I got the benefits of being a child of God. And so now that I got due to the power, you might want to watch how you approach me. You might want to show me some love. Because if I let the Holy Ghost in me, rise up in me. And I speak to that situation, it will change because of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You don't understand. We can get caught so caught up in our situation, our circumstances. And it seems like it's so big and we're so small. But we forget about the fact that God has deposited something on the inside of us. He gave us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to help us to walk right. The Holy Ghost is supposed to help us to stand right. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is supposed to help us to deal with those who try to intimidate us. Right. But the Holy Ghost is not for us.
to boast about. That's right. The Holy Ghost is not for us to brag about what we're doing. That's right. But the Holy Ghost is here to help us be a light. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so we allow the Holy Ghost to work in us to touch lives. Because we're walking with doing this time. Why why have dynamite and don't use it? It matters what I believe 
from his word. And if his word said, I can do it. If his word didn't give me any limitation, then I can walk freely and boldly knowing I got the word. And if I got the word, I got Jesus. Because he is the living word. He is the true word. Yes. And so I understand that God has given me the ability to walk with doom and stop. Yes, so I don't get upset when I got to lean on his grace. All right, yeah. Because he's backing it up by his power. Yes. Oh, yes. If he did it before, yes. then he can do it again. Yes. I want to encourage someone on this morning to lean on God's grace yes. because he's backed by his power. All right. Don't let the limitations you have in your natural body keep you from believing God. He has all power to change any situation or circumstance you are facing in life. Mm -hmm. The the third point I want to share with you is that we can lean on God's grace because it's backed by God's love. All right. right. Amen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8 says, but God committed his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, mm-hmm. Christ died for us. God shows us his ultimate love when he said his only thing got son to die on the cross for our sins. Yes. Yes. The type of love that he displayed is called agape love. Yeah. Because it's selfless, yeah. sacrificial, unconditional, anything. Mm-hmm. God's agape love is, is his ongoing concern for lost and fallen people. Mm-hmm. His incomparable love, love for humanity humankind. God gives his love without condition to those who are undeserved mm-hmm. and inferior to himself. A godly love is active yeah. uh-huh. and demonstrated through action. Uh-huh. 1 John 2, 2 said, and he, and, and he, which is Jesus, is a propitiation for our sins. Mm-hmm. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The Bible says that Paul understood what a godly love was. Uh-huh. Yeah. He understood it on the Damascus Road. Mm-hmm. While he was breathing threats against God's people, God stopped by. All right, all right. Well, aren't you glad on this morning that even when you had to fool, God was still stopped by? Yeah. 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 Aren't you glad that every night, even though you had to fool, God was still bless you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you got to repent for what you did. Yeah. But just for the mere fact that God was stopped by in my nastiness. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. That, that, that's a copy love. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Because he didn't have to do it. But, but he chose to do it. Thank you, But on, on, on the flip side of that is God is asking us as his light bearers <laughs> to walk with a copy love. That's right. All right. Uh, that, that, that sometimes is a challenge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't believe it's a challenge? Let somebody wrong you. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not talking about a, a, a little scratch. I'm talking about let somebody really wrong you. Yes. And then they come back and ask you for something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they come back and ask you for They, they got a need that need you to help them with something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because sometimes we walk around like we, you know, we okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, talk, I'm talking to me. I'm yeah. yeah. preaching to me. Right. Walk around like we okay that we ain't bothered by this person and their actions. But every now and then, when they come to you and need something, how are you at? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is the agape love that God has given us present in this situation. Mm-hmm. Because you know what the devil's going to do. He's he going to play back what they did. Mm-hmm. He's going to remind you of the things that they were doing to you. And he's going to say, well, why are you helping them? You know they just got to talking about you. Amen. Why are you having them? You know they plotting against you. But God said, I got, I got you love. Yeah. Because I love you when you was alone. Mm-hmm. I, I love you when nobody wanted to tolerate you. I love you when nobody wanted to be around you. And so because I love and because I am love. Yeah. And because you are a child of God, I need you to love. Amen. 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 And so, so we have to get to a point in life and we have to mature in Christ where we, we can push back past the hurt. That's right. You have to ask God, God help me push past the hurt so I can love. Yes. If you don't do it, I can't do it because in my natural, I want to 
tell them something. Yes. Uh -huh. But but I got to allow you to be God in me, so I got to let you have your way. Amen. And sometimes God will just say, shut your mouth. Yes. That that is one of the, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. That that is one of the most dis disappointing things sometimes when God tells you to shut up. Yes. <laughs> Don't say nothing. If you can help them, help them. Yeah. But God, I, I just want to tell them something. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you said you want to be my disciple. You said you want to be a light. So sometimes you got to carry some things. Yeah. So sometimes you got to carry that thorn in your flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you got to allow God to be God and you just shut up. <laughs> you might be biting your lip You got blood tripping down your chin But shut up Because God said I got to work in you Because if I show them A difference in you That's going to promote them That's what happened if I, if I get you to respond In a manner that they're not accustomed to They don't want to know what happened And God said I'm trying to strike up curiosity And feel about me Right. And I'm using you as the vessel to do it. All right. Yeah. Use me, though. So for, for this moment in time, stay on the cross. Stay on the cross. You said when you got that morning that God, I want to take on my cross. Mm -hmm. today. Your cross for today is dealing with that person that's mistreated. Mm -hmm. your, your cross for today is to show them a godly love, even though you know they're plotting against you. Uh huh. One of, the, one of the hardest things I had to deal with when I had to learn and mature is the fact that I can hear somebody talking about me. I hear them. But I still got to show them love. Yeah. That, that's, that's one of the hardest things because it's so humbling to know that I got to allow you to think you're getting away with what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Amen. Because I got to show them love. Yeah. I got to let you know that God loves you in spite of you. Yes. In spite of your wicked ways, I got to let you know that God loves you. Amen. And the only way I can do that is by allowing you to mistreat me, but me still love you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that, that might require me when I get home to go to my prayer closet and just cry a little bit. Yeah. But I understand that it's for a better purpose. Yeah. It's for somebody else seeing Jesus in the part of their sin. Yeah. And if I can allow somebody to mistreat me mm. just so they can see Jesus, yeah. 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 then I stay on my cross. Yeah. 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 I, I deny myself so that I can follow up in him. But every now and then, you got to understand that God's love surpasses anything that you can think of. It surpasses anything that you can comprehend. God's love is all-knowing. God knows how bad we are, and he still loves us. Yeah. And God said, I want to get you to the point where you can love somebody even though they're bad. Uh -huh. yeah. I need to get you to where you can love somebody even when they mistreat you. Uh -huh. I got to get you to love somebody even when they talk about you like a dog. Uh -huh. Because agape love does not have stipulations. That's right. Yeah. It's just love unconditional. Right. It's just love sacrificing. And sometimes being on that cross hurts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes carrying that thorn around hurts. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you on today that when you get to where it really starts to hurt, and when you get to the point where you really can't understand and can't take it no more, mm -hmm. that, that's the best time that you can lean yeah. on God's grace. Yeah. 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 And, and as I prepare to close, I want to remind you that you can lean on God's grace because it's backed by his faithfulness. Yeah, it's backed by his power. Mm -hmm. It's backed by his love. Mm -hmm. In verse 10 from the NLT Bible, Paul says, he takes pleasure in his weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And in his such hardship, persecution, and trouble that he suffered for Christ. Mm -hmm. Because when he is weak, then he is strong. Yes, yes. It was in then in that incident that I had to ask Paul the question, was this an isolated incident where you had to lean on the grace of God? Or was this a normal part of your lifestyle? 
And it was then where the Holy Spirit took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. All right. All right. Beginning at verse 24, Paul starts to tell me the time he had to lean on God's grace. He said, five different times the Jewish, Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Mm -hmm. Three times I was beaten with rod. Mm -hmm. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. Mm -hmm. I have trouble traveled on many long journeys. I have faced dangers from rivers and robbers. I have faced dangers from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced dangers in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced dangers from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I have worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. I can hear the Apostle Paul saying that despite all that I went through, I made it through it all because I learned to lean on the grace <laughs> yes. of God. Yes. It's because of God's grace that I'm successful and I did not lose my mind. Yes. And I know that somebody in the house of the night today that yes. testified that it's because of God's grace yes. I didn't touch somebody. Else. <laughs> yes. It's because of God's grace yes. that I still have my right mind. Yes. Yes. It's because of grace that I'm able to stand here today and praise the God that I serve. So I don't know what obstacles you are facing or ahead of you. I don't know what trials and tribulations you're currently facing. But I do know we can follow Paul's example. And we are faced with our backs up against the wall. When we don't know what to do next. When we don't know how the situation is going to play out. We can lean on God's grace. If you got God's grace on your side, everything is going to work out right. Yes. Romans 8, 28 tells us, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Since we know that everything we go through will work together for our good. I need those who are able on this morning to give the Lord a loud shout of praise for what he's doing in your life. Hallelujah! And so, just for a few minutes, as I take my seat, if you ever had to deal with a difficult person and God brought you through it, you lean on His grace. I need you to give a shout of praise. And if you ever had a trial in your life that you think you don't make it through, but the Lord brought you through, I need you to give a
doors of the church are open. Perhaps there's someone here today that has heard this message and have been pricked in your spirit. Perhaps somebody is saying that I want to experience this faithfulness of God. I want to experience this power of God. I want to experience this love of God. If you're in the building and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, won't you come? The invitation is extended as the deacons are walking. Is there one? The times to come are going to be tough times. And we've got to know that we know that we know. That we have the one that we can lean on in those times. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the invitation is extended today. The next call is for church membership. Perhaps there's someone here today that doesn't have a covering, doesn't have a, a church home. And for some reason, God led you here to Jericho Baptist Church on this day. Is there someone here that would like to accept Jericho as your church home? You can come by letter, you can come by baptism, or you can come by Christian experience. Is there one? So the invitation is extended for salvation. The invitation is extended for church membership. The next invitation is for restoration. Perhaps there's someone in the building today and you know that. You haven't been doing everything the way that you should be. You backslid. You put God on the back burner to do the things that you wanted to do, but God is pricking you in your spirits today through the message that was given to come forward and to get your life right with God. Is there one? Is there one? And the very last call is for special prayer. Perhaps there's something that you need prayer for and you want us to stand in agreement with you and your prayers to the Lord or perhaps you know of someone and you just want to stand in the gap for them for special prayer the truth is we all could use some prayer in our life or something is that right? We all can do some prayer for something that we're going through. Things that may be seen, some things that may be unseen. But I know a God that can fix anything. Let us pray. call upon your holy and most precious name again today, Lord God. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for this word that has come forth, Lord God. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your messenger. Lord God, and we just ask right now that you will restore unto him, Lord God, what he has poured out unto us. Lord God, that you will touch him. Touch his family, Lord God. Touch his loved ones, Lord God. That you will grant them safe traveling mercies, Lord God, to and from their destinations, Lord God. Heavenly Father, right now we pray for everyone that has come forth, Lord God, leaning and relying on you, Lord God, in this time of need, in their time of need, Lord God, for whatever they've come forward for, God. We know that you know all about it, Lord God, and that we know that you, God, are a fixer, Lord God. We know that you are a mender, Lord God. We know that you are a healer, Lord God, we know that you are a restorer, Lord God. 
We know that you are a deliverer, Lord God. We know that you are a savior, Lord God. And we know that you are everything that we could ever want or need you to be, Lord God. So right now we bring our situations to the altar, Lord God. And we lay them before you, Lord God, like with confidence, Lord God, that you gonna take our situation, Lord God, and that you are going to do the work, Lord God, that needs to be done. Lord God, we know that we have tried, Lord God. We've tried to do some things on our own, Lord God. And Lord God, we, we, we failed at it, God. But now, Lord God, we want to bring these things before you, Lord God. But we ask that you forgive us, Lord God, for trying to do things, Lord God, without you. Knowing that, Lord God, you are there for us to lay our, our burdens upon you, Lord God. Because our burdens are not too heavy for you. So, Lord God, right now we bring our burdens, Lord God, to the altar. Lord God, we bring our fears to the altar. We bring our situations and circumstances to the altar, Lord God. We bring our health issues, God, to the altar, Lord God. We bring our job situations, financial situations, Lord God, to the altar. We bring our family situations to the altar, Lord God. And anything else, Lord God, we bring it before you, Lord God, and we say we're going to lay it down at the altar, Lord God. And then, Lord God, when we lay it down, we're going to leave it down, Lord God, knowing that you're going to take care of the situation. Lord God, in the areas where we need to be strengthened, Lord God, where we need to be built up, Lord God, where our faith needs to be uplifted, Lord God, we just pray that you do that for us right now, Lord God. Lord God, if we dare try to turn it back and pick it back up, Lord God, we just pray that you give us a, a push, Lord God, to turn it the other way. Lord God, I thank you for everyone, Lord God, that's here today. I thank you for those that are watching, Lord God. God, I thank you for those that stand before you in faith, Lord God, knowing that you can do all things in Jesus Christ, God. We thank you for your precious son, Jesus. We thank you for your restoration, Lord God. We thank you for your deliverance today, Lord God. We thank you for what we came to this altar to receive, Lord God, because we believe by faith, God, that when we step forward, Lord God, and give it to you, that you're going to do what it is that you said that you would do. God, right now, we give you glory. We give you honor. Lord God, we give you the ultimate praise right now. Come on and celebrate the Lord right now. and dismiss us in his own way. Amen. Amen.